Ain't it pretty? Look who's back in New York City! He's the ghost with the most, and he's back from the dead. Beetlejuice is back on Broadway at the Marquee Theater. I had a chance to sit down with the star, Alex Brightman. Beetlejuice, let's talk about it. Let's people talk are, about it. People are excited. People I'm are, one of those I people. Mean, is it different every time getting back on stage, I guess after this amount of time, uh, the oh, pandemic God. and the, I don't know, what's on your mind? My, well, yes, first of all, to answer your first question, it was Im nearly impossible to get back to this stamina-wise, energy-wise, comedically, because how much of an audience do you have during a pandemic? Kind of nobody. The dog's tired of it. My dog is so tired of me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my wife actually, thankfully, was great. I mean, like she really, I think she gets a kick out of me. Who's to say? Yeah. I, I think know. she really does though, and I get a kick out of her in, in tandem. <laughs> and we're both funny, so I think that's helpful. But after that, you come back to like a room full of people to try and be funny and also like orchestrate the show, because that's kind of my job, is to sort of be, mm -hmm. be this ringmaster. And it was difficult for the first couple days just because I didn't know how to musical theater anymore. But coming back to it after two years of thinking about it, because I certainly wasn't done with it when we closed. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone was. There's so many ideas now that we've now let sort of play out in the rehearsal process. And that I am like oddly grateful for the time because now I had some perspective on it and kind of grew up two years and now have new jokes, new bits all of which I'm getting encouraged to do on stage. Even oh. some improv, which is like really fun. I have the freedom to be very much in the moment mm -hmm. and the smallest of moments. Being able to look at the crowd and if you know somebody feeds me something or if somebody has done something or they're talking or they're on their phone, it, it no longer is a safe place for them. And I say that in a great way right. because I'm able to go, hey, hey you. And that's great. And there's so many new experiences that everybody I feel like went through together versus maybe two years ago, I don't know, everyone came from different places, sure. came and sat down in the theater, and now everybody collectively has really gone through a lot together. And everybody, I think, wants to laugh. I mean, and our show, I mean, it's weird because our show is about death. So it's like considering the last two years coming back, it is funny to be in a show to that, that sort of laughs in the face of it, but I think it's good. I think that's therapizing in a way. Welcome to a show about death. Give me a day in, in the life for you um, now that you know, you're back on stage. What's a day look like? Because you're working, full. your wife's working. Yeah, everything's full, thankfully, because it didn't used to be in the last two years, and that was a nightmare to have to wake up and yeah. either task yourself to do something or not. But now having a schedule to then fit other things into, that's where I thrive. So a typical day is I wake up at seven-ish, I walk my dog, um, I come home, I drink a, so much coffee, and then kind of between the hours of around 8 and 11, it's like when I get my best writing done, because that's been another part of my career, is writing musicals or writing television shows or, thing, or pitching cartoons or things like that. And then giving myself little breaks here and there, but then it's rehearsal. For the most part, two feet in the pool, in rehearsal, focused. Especially now because of what we've gone through in the last two years and for health, my radius is pretty tight. So I only do the things I need to do so as not to get, you know, get sick or get my family sick, which I've been successful at. So everyone always says, where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? I'd like to ask you, where do you see yourself, when you look at yourself now and you go back 10 years, do you think you'd be, have been here? Oh God, no. No, I think I'm ambitious, but I don't, I'm totally realistic about what's going on and how many actors there are and just creative people in general. I mean, I also know what I look like, so it's like, <laughs> I don't say that, that to, I don't, here's what I mean, <laughs> is 10 years ago, my idea of a leading man was somebody who was like, had a six pack, looked like Gaston, and could sing high tenor stuff with no warming up. And I'm the but opposite. But that's what it was 10 years ago. Right. That's what it was. But I think like with the, when School of Rock happened and they trusted me with that role, it sort of, me and a couple of others, I'm not the only pioneer of this, redefined what it meant to just be a leading man. It didn't, there wasn't a type anymore. Right. It's just that you led the show. So I've been really happy that that's been the case because I like doing it. Um, but no, not in a million years that I think one would be leading any show, but two be nominated for both, which is also <laughs> absurd. I think also what I attribute it to is momentum. I think that you, you see something that's going well and you don't just ride on that. You go, okay, well, how can I use this for the next thing? Now that people are turning their attention to me, maybe I'm a writer, maybe I'm this, right. and, and I'll actually get people to read my stuff. Whereas it took, 10 years ago, so it was so much harder to get people sure. to read a page of my work. Sure. 
So it's really nice. I mean, it's afforded me so many cool things, but not in a bazillion years would I believe it would be like this. I'm very happy. Yeah.